So how did I get started with code? Where did I begin? What motivated me to start learning how to code? In this video, I'm gonna share with you my 10 plus years journey, starting from the very beginning to where I am today. All right, so I wasn't always a coder. I didn't grow up learning how to code as a teenager in the basement of my house. That wasn't me. I lived a completely different lifestyle back then. 10 plus years ago, I was doing something totally different from what I'm doing right now. New York Councilman Joe Rivera has a few words you'd like to say. Joe? Yeah! Yeah, man, Joe. Uh, thank you very much, Dana. Is New York City ready for the USC? Yeah! I was in my last term as the majority leader of the New York City Council, and I had to start thinking about what's next. What's the next chapter in my life? What will I do going forward? Will I continue in politics? Will I continue in government? Or will I go a different direction? My family was growing, so I had to make a decision did I want to stay local or was I willing to travel to different places like going to Albany, going to Washington? And I made a decision that I wanted to stay local. So I started exploring different opportunities. I got into real estate, I became a real estate agent and I started helping people buy and sell homes. And one thing I learned from the brokers that I was working with was that if you wanted to get leads for buyers or sellers, you needed to be found online. And he was really good at search engine optimization. So we were generating a whole lot of leads but those leads were for the office so then i started thinking about how can i generate my own leads that's what made me decide to start exploring the opportunity of owning my own website a local real estate website so mind you this is 10 plus years ago so i started talking to a bunch of different web design agencies and freelance developers and i started getting some quotes now on the low end i was getting quoted somewhere between three to five thousand dollars but then on the high end for a fully functional real estate website, it was $20,000 plus. Some places were charging significantly more. Let me tell you, I was not ready to throw down $20,000 on a website. So I figured maybe this is something I can learn on my own. Maybe I could learn how to create a website. I didn't really think it would be that difficult. And that was kind of naive on my side because like anything, it has to be respected. The process of learning to code and creating websites has to be respected. Even today with all the different types of tools that you could use to create a website that make it easy with virtually no code, even the process of creating a website now isn't as easy as it sounds. But back then it was a lot different. So I just decided, let me start learning how to code. Where do I begin? So I bought a couple of books. I first started learning how to code with HTML. I think the editor I was using back then was Dreamweaver. And one thing I noticed is that when I was starting to learn the HTML part of it, it didn't really take me that long to get the basics. But then I realized that it really didn't look like much. I mean, I was looking at different real estate websites and seeing what they provided and what type of functionality they had. And I wasn't able to duplicate that with HTML. HTML and the styling of it wasn't where it needed to be. So obviously from there, I progressed to the next language, right? I started to learn CSS, cascading style sheets. And this is the language that helps you to add some style to your website to make it look a little bit more visually appealing. So I started learning that. I started applying the CSS to my HTML and started to create something that looked a little bit better. I was inspired by the different real estate websites online and tried to do a lot of research on what other local agencies was doing. But obviously then I realized that even with the new design and the way the HTML looked, it still didn't have the functionality I needed. So then I knew I needed to learn more. Mind you, I'm still working. I have my family that also, you know, is my family and I'm trying to learn how to code. And now today you might take it for granted because there's so many different resources to learn how to code online. So many different tutorials, so many different platforms. I mean, the hardest part now is choosing which platform or which tutorial you're gonna take. But back then you were really limited on your options. So then I started to try to figure out the path to creating a better website. And mind you, I had something that was very basic in the beginning. It was very simple and now I needed it to be a little bit more dynamic. So then how do you add dynamic features to a static website? Because that's what an HTML based 
website really is, a static site. So then I started diving deeper into the different languages that go in part of the whole entire stack of a website. So I started to learn a little bit about JavaScript and I started to learn about PHP. And PHP really grabbed me at the time because it was and still is the language that's used on the vast majority of websites. And there's a lot of tutorials online about it. So I started really working hard at that. I started really spending a lot of time, a lot of nights really just studying and researching and trying out, testing on my local development server that I had set up. And once I had a better grasp of PHP, I started to feel a little bit more empowered. I started to feel like I was actually getting somewhere, but then I needed to find a way. Again, this was a real estate website I was working on. I needed to find a way to try to get all the real estate listings in the area to be part of my website. So then that's when I discovered IDX, Internet Data Exchange. And that is a service that's provided where for realtors, you could have all the real estate listings in the local market on your website. So mind blown. I'm like, okay, this is going to be awesome. So I integrated the service with my site and it started popping up. Mind you, my website was straight up vanilla HTML, CSS, some JavaScript built into it and PHP powered. Then I'm integrating the IDX component to it. And then I'm realizing that I needed more. So then I started focusing on my SQL. So now let's keep track of all this. I'm in real estate. I have my family. I'm in the final term of my position in elected office and I'm learning how to code, putting together a website. I don't think I got a lot of sleep for a long time because I needed to get so many themes done. Done. But then I realized, wait, my website wasn't showing up on page one of Google. So then I started researching search engine optimization, SEO. Search engine optimization was the best way to get found online back in the day. Nowadays, it's still very important. You still have to focus on your SEO game, but we have more social media marketing nowadays. We have a lot more different ways to drive traffic to a website. So I spent a few months really fine tuning my SEO, creating more content for my website, making sure that I checked off all the most important things that you have to focus on with SEO. Then I started to get more leads. I started to realize that my website was being viewed more often. Then I realized I was hooked on code. I inadvertently became a web developer. It wasn't the plan. The plan was to get a website. I also didn't want to shell out the $20,000 plus that was needed for the type of website I wanted. So I did it myself. Now reality check, the design of the site, it was not pretty. It was not a good looking site, but I started to get leads. And then some other realtors in the area started realizing that my website was on page one, not an agency website, not a big name brokerage website. A local website was ranking on page one for the most important keywords in real estate. So then they started asking me, how did I do it? What did I do? And I realized I'm like, wait a minute, there's a need here. And I figured I'm spending so much time on coding and less and less time on real estate that maybe I need to shift gears. And over time, that's when Pixum Web, that's my website, was born. At this point, I'm still just using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, MySQL. I created my website and I wasn't using any libraries, any CMS or any type of frameworks at the time. I started taking on some clients and one thing I got asked about often was, do you use WordPress? And at first I was like, no, I don't use WordPress. I just code the website the way I see fit based on what's needed. And then I just hand over the site. But then I realized, I'm like, wait a minute, I spent the time to become a coder. Not everybody else is willing to do that. Most people want to just conduct business. So handing over a website that is not based on a content management system to someone who's not a developer or a coder, that user experience for them is not the best and was not the best. So that's when I said, all right, let me start getting into WordPress. I started to study it, research it, figure out how it works in terms of themes, plugins, started to look at the core of WordPress itself. And then I said, all right, I'm a freelance developer. WordPress makes it easy for me to keep my prices down and hand over a website to a client they could be able to self-manage it if they need to. Everything seemed to be working the way I wanted it to work. But now I started thinking about something different. All right, so I know HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and then I picked up jQuery along the way, PHP, MySQL. I learned about IDX, which was important for real estate websites. I started diving into WordPress, but I was still working with shared hosting. And I realized that the performance of a website matters. And that's where I decided to start getting into VPSs, which is a virtual private service 
server. And let me tell you something, that opened up another rabbit hole for me. Because then I realized that, you know what? There's gotta be ways to fine tune your server, fine tune the performance of it, optimize it. So then I started learning Linux. Now, all through this time, I've been working with Mac and I've been working with Windows, but now I needed to learn an entirely brand new operating system. So then I spent time focusing on that. And at first I have to admit Linux wasn't easy for me to pick up, but as everything, the more you put into it, the more time you spend learning how something operates, the better you're gonna get. So then I migrated my website and a lot of my clients' websites over to VPSs. I started to figure out how to play with the configuration files of Linux and I started figuring out how to work with Apache for the web server itself. I learned the power of the command line, the terminal, the power of being able to SSH into your server, being able to use rsync in order to securely bring things to and from your server to your local computer, setting up cron jobs, learn the basics of bash scripting. And let me tell you, my brain was getting full of information. And mind you, I'm still trying to keep up with my learning of PHP and other coding languages that I was using. And I decided to start up my YouTube channel. I figured one of the best ways to get found online besides search engine optimization is YouTube. So I started creating my videos and I created hour long videos on how to code WordPress themes. One of my videos is over two hours long, very detailed on how to code a WordPress theme. But editing that video, now that took me a long time. So then I decided, how can I automate the process? There's gotta be a way to make it easier. I mean, that's the purpose of code, to make your life easier. That's when I decided to learn Python because with Python, you could automate a lot of the things you need to get done. And now when I create long videos, I have a Python program that edits the video and takes care of about roughly 80 to 90% of the video editing process. The benefit of that is it frees me up to do something different. Maybe work on the thumbnails or get back to clients, do some updating of my server and my code. It just makes life easier. So over the past 10 years, I went from being in office, being an elected official, segueing into a career in real estate, and then finding what I really wanted to do, which was code. Along the way, I learned HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery. I learned Node.js. I learned about Gulp. I learned MySQL. I learned Python. I learned how to work with a Linux server. I learned Apache. I learned WordPress. And the most important thing that I learned is that you will never stop learning. There's always going to be something new for you to learn, always something new for me to learn. They say it takes about 10 years or 10,000 hours to master something. I don't know if I'll ever master the code, but I know for sure I'll never stop learning. And you shouldn't either. When you're just getting started, when you're just beginning, think long term. And before you know it, you're going to achieve your goals and you're going to become a full stack web developer or front end developer or back end developer. Now, I'm a freelancer. I control my own time. I get to spend time with my family. I get to work on projects that I enjoy working on. And I've become a researcher of code. All right, so that's my 10 year journey to becoming a full stack web developer. What's your journey like? What are your goals? Share them down below. I hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, comment down below. Make sure you share with others and I'll see you in the next one. Happy coding.